then go ahead and use those links. I hate seagulls. I really thought I'd get through a video without having to do that. Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to talk about this. This little box here is a USB 4 to 10 GBE network adapter. That, my friends, is a big deal. Although I say that, I reckon the audience watching this video can be split right down the middle. There's going to be half of you, that I think include myself, that have been wondering for years why the USB conventions that have been opening up the doors to 10 gigabit Ethernet, uh, 10 gigabit performance bandwidth to 20 gigabit performance to now in USB 4 with 40 gig performance, why there wasn't a simple USB powered 10G adapter. And there's going to be the other half of people that are watching this video saying, that already exists. This is a Thunderbolt to 10 GBE adapter. These have been around for the better part of two to two and a half years. Loads of brands have been on board with it. And it has allowed users to take advantage of Thunderbolt 3 connectivity at 40 gigabits per second to translate towards 10 gigabit ethernet there. So why is this a big deal if that's already existed for a while? Well, this device knocking around a price point again i've seen it as low as 82 dollars going as high as 114 dollars frankly the pricing is absolutely bonkers on this device it is different no matter what website you go to it isn't just your aliexpress and your amazon but i will say i picked this up myself on um, aliexpress we paid 72 nickel without the tax here me and eddie here at nas compares and it arrived pretty promptly in eight Days. So I was already pleased with that and I looked into a little bit there of the background and the similarities between this and Thunderbolt alternatives are remarkably similar. The uh, controller inside you require the driver the AQC113 and a Quantia controller there which also bears stark resemblance there to the Marvell. Um, this is a USB type C USB 4, Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4 enabled device that allows you to add 10 GBE. So straight away, some of you may have noticed there that USB 2, USB 3.1 and USB 3.2 did not make the cut. That's right, you can't use this in anything lower than Thunderbolt 4, 3 and USB Type 4. And that's because USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4, not only supporting Thunderbolt 3, are interchangeable with the right devices. There are some devices that don't support both protocols. Do double check your drivers and the hardware support there. But this means that this is sort of like this device plus. It's allowing you to add 10 GBE conveniently that is, you heard it, bus powered. Also, although you can only really pick it up right now in a copper based version, I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing SFP versions any day now. But that does bring us back to that question once again about the differences between this and the Thunderbolt adapter. Because another thing a number of you may have noticed is that pricing, even when we were talking about that fluctuating all over the place price of $82 to $114 without the tax, the majority of Thunderbolt to you, uh, Thunderbolt to 10 GBE adapters, whether you go for the Sonnet Solo, you go for QNAP's offering, StarTech's offering, a Kitty's, all of them together, even the OWCs, all of those are retailing roughly about 160 to 250 dollars. This manages to simplify things significantly and arrive at a better price point. Again, I very much doubt IO Crest hold any kind of control or you know IP on this architecture. I'm surprised it's not flooded out with others in the market. Indeed, when we were over at Computex, when we saw QNAP stand, they're already running a QNAP version of this. And they're also planning a dual port version to add USB type four to two 10 GB adapters and even a 25 gig version of this, which only doubles down on that idea of what USB four slash Thunderbolt four is opening the gateway on for easy network conversions. And therefore, no more relying on PCIe cards to add 10 GBE there. You're going to be obviously limited by the ports and connections on your physical system there. And we're going to do another video with NAS testing, by the way, and we'll get to that later on. But at least for now, as more systems are starting to arrive with USB 4 on board, this is opening the gateway to adding 
10 gig of ethernet and greater very conveniently. I would argue the system itself is perhaps a little bare bones currently at the moment. Jumbo frames could be adapted up to 16 KB, but you're, again, you're gonna be fine at nine. Uh, power consumption is rated at 2.5 watt if you utilize the full 10 GBE connection there, but as it supports auto negotiation, you can go down to five gig where it's 1.5 uh, watts being utilized there and one watt if you go for the one and 2.5 gig utilization there. I had to go from official uh, documentation for this. Um, I will say when I started taking the device apart, unsurprisingly, it's quite simple inside. You've got that entire external um, uh, build there for the heat dissipation. There's no active fan. There's no noise inside this. Once you open this up, it really is just two boards inside. The first board that you find there is the main M.2 adapter there with a couple of controllers on board and a, an M.2 that slides in that delivers that 10 GBE connection on there. So it's not a single board internally. There's only really one heat sink and that's on top of that a, uh, AQC113 controller inside. I don't know if it's the C version version there. Um, one of the things that USB 4 does bring to the table is support of PCIe 4 and that means each one of those lanes opening up the door to 2000 megabytes per second. However, despite the fact I've tested this on both a USB 4 and a Thunderbolt 3 and 4 device, more on that in a moment, I will say that when I opened up the, uh, the box and have a look at the documentation, Time and time again, I saw Thunderbolt 3. I saw Thunderbolt 10 GBE. I saw Thunderbolt 3 documentation. And overall, there's every possibility when you're buying something like this online, you may just be getting something not similar to this, which will probably still work, but it does bring into question the validity of this as a product compared with something that's already existing. It's definitely cheaper, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a whole new product. Now moving over to performance, we tested this with over here, an Acer Store Flash Store uh, 12 Pro. This has got a 10 GBE connection here. We went with a single connection onto this with four M.2 SSDs in a RAID 5 environment internally on this. We made sure that uh, jumbo packets uh, or uh, jumbo frames on both devices were set to 9K and did a simple SMB mapped drive. Now with that, we went through several tests. With the Atto uh, test there, with Atto Disk Benchmark at 256 megabytes, and that pretty much fully saturated. It hit the full one gigabytes per second or um, 10 GBE very comfortably there. And that was just a nice, simple Atto repeated test. Now when we moved on to AJA, uh, we did a one gigabyte 1080p video file there and we saw performance numbers of 550 to 600 megs over 800 megs now when we went to the windows testing that's where things kind of got very very messy i started with a thousand png files and it was just shy of a gig and transferred them over and performance was very, very spotty. How much of that was uh, the flash doors Celeron process and how much of this was the adapter? I know my rig can definitely transfer that kind of performance, uh, but it was very negligible. When I went for um, 30 gigabytes of uh, video data there separated, uh, I think just around 10 files from uh, an Unraid video that's coming up very, very soon, that ended up sitting at around a right of 580 over 600, give or take. And when we did a single 10 gig file, direct transfer there onto the system, it averaged about 600 megs, but that 600 megs throttled and bottlenecked. It didn't go higher than that, which made me wonder about the overhead and the performance potential of this device when I couldn't, during that 10 gig file transfer, get outside of that 600. It was nothing to do with OBS recording on my local system, but I just could not get out of that bandwidth. Nevertheless, this all provided a greater degree of performance afforded to my system at a very convenient competitive price. Now, as mentioned, USB 4 NAS systems are becoming increasingly common. From DIY boards that we talked about here on the channel that rock out the gate with USB 4 to OS free NAS ready solutions that all arrive with either Thunderbolt 4 connectivity or arriving with USB 4 out the gate. And then you've got systems like the Ugreens where several of them arrive with Thunderbolt. Now, a lot of these systems still do not currently support direct network connectivity via their Thunderbolt USB connections there. Only QNAP really has that in the market. But an adapter like this and them integrating that driver via GitHub via a third party or in their OS perhaps will allow you to add 
10GPE to those systems. The rest of the turnkey NAS solution market, not many of them outside of very expensive systems have got USB 4, but it does mean right now that you are going to be able to jump on the bandwagon and add 10GPE to a number of systems that do not have PCIe upgradability. Ultimately, the blurry lines between these two devices aren't enough reason for me to not recommend this. I do think I can recommend this to most users looking to add 10 GBE to a USB 4 or Thunderbolt Quick system. One, the performance was what I expected it to be. It wasn't out of this world, but I will say, compared with the majority of Thunderbolt to 10G adapters I've seen, it was comparable, even at that 600 meg cap at times. On top of that, right now, if you have a system that doesn't have PCI upgradability, you are limited to just two options. You either go for USB to 2.5G adapters, which knock around for about 15 to 20 dollars, or you go for USB to 5GBE adapters to add better bandwidth, and these retail for 60 to 80 dollars. So with that in mind, Spending $80 to $100 on average to add 10 GBE, and remember you can get multiple of these, isn't a bad thing. I'm just going to be very interested to see how this gets utilized by NAS brands. Because if they don't have USB 4, this is going to be useless anyway, because you can't go earlier than that. You can only go with Thunderbolt and USB 4. But as newer systems are rocking out the gate with USB 4, and SMB multi-channel is going to be supported on devices like this, We've got to wonder, is now the time that PCIe upgrade cards in NAS should either start getting more affordable or at the very least, at the very least the next few years not become the status quo? Let me know what you think. We're going to go into another video with this device soon as we test different NAS systems, hoping for the best. If you want to learn more, if you've got questions about this device, put them in the comments below. I'm in the middle of writing a review for this and I'll add those questions or add those tests to the follow-up video. There's a link to this over on AliExpress. I'll list a few different retailers below and if you're interested in getting hold of one of these and you were going to go to one of those shops anyway and that's very important then go ahead and use those links i hate seagulls i really thought i'd get through a video without having to do that thank you so much for watching and have yourselves a bloody great weekend